beautiful views, spacious interiors, comfortable sofas and wonderful hospitality. Everything in the African style. Check it out. It's a Blazer farm in Namibia. Previously, you've seen what our first hunt looked like. To take some rest from the gunfire noise, today we've decided to take you on a little tour of the Blazer farm, where we have the pleasure to stay during our trip. So watch how we relax before the next trip and what you can do on the farm in your free time. After every hunt, hunters are greeted by Emma, a cute female warthog. At the sight of so many gentlemen, she flutters her long eyelashes and asks for caresses. Przemek is quickly tempted. Scratch my chin, boy. Come on, let your mate be jealous. The mates in a hurry reach for phones and cameras and arrange a small photo session. Some even return the little princess the favor and share lunch with her. Emma accepts such gifts with great gusto. Of course, like any other warthog, on her knees. But this cute pet is not the only attraction of Blazer Safari. Our command center, a place where we relax, eat meals and share hunting experiences, offers many more attractions. Tastefully decorated in African style and full of original memorabilia and photos makes a very positive impression. So now, using the break between hands, we will take you on a little tour. Nie opuszczamy jeszcze naszej lodzi. Jesteśmy na takim tarasiku, stąd widać na. We are on the lodge terrace. We can see our pool from here, but we haven't used it yet because July in Namibia is the middle of winter. Here you can come in the evening, relax, have a good beer or a local wine. And now I'd like to invite you in, so you can see the main place where we spend time getting back after a hunt. To główne miejsce, gdzie spędzamy czas, wracając po polowaniu. We are in the TV room, which we don't use because there are so many interesting things happening outside. You just don't have time to watch telly. It's way more interesting to watch the wildlife live. From here you have a fantastic view of the main hall. Comfortable sofas await us downstairs, so that after the hardships of a hunt, you can sit back and wait for those who haven't returned yet, or just read the latest hunting magazines. Behind the fireplace there's a place where we usually have meals. Breakfast, dinner, well, dinner not always, because we have it outside as well. We are already downstairs, but first, let me take you outside. Here's the place where everything begins daily. Here we meet professional hunters who take us hunting. It's here we meet those who will show us how to hunt in Africa and what real bush looks like. Now let's go inside. You can see these fantastic trophies hanging on the walls here. Seeing them makes you want to go hunting. Look at the walls. Each of us would like to have such trophies. In the back there's even a lion. Although they don't live in the area, it's here to remind us we're in Africa.
Near the table, where we have our delicious meals, there's an oryx, which is the main goal of our expedition. Each of us wants to bring home such a trophy. At the entrance, Emma, which you've already met, often greets us. The whole Blazer Lodge is nicely decorated in African style. Here's another place outside where we can sit down and talk when it's warm. It's a special place for souvenir fans, but not only. Let's look at the store, where apart from African souvenirs, you can buy all hunting equipment. If you forget anything, you'll find it here. Luckily, we've brought along all the necessary things, except for one, petroleum jelly. Finally, we can smooth the mouth and face the sun and dry air. Welcome to our giraffe house. Now I'll show you around. As you can see, the room is very spacious. There are two beds in the middle, covered with a canopy and a mosquito net. Here's our studio, where we've installed equipment and computers, and where we edit all the footage that we record every day. As we are already at the door, I'd like to invite you to the terrace. There's our own pool, where, if we want, we can swim. Although this time of year the water doesn't encourage to swim. It's only a dozen degrees. But if you come here to hunt during Namibian summer or spring, I'm sure you wouldn't go out of this pool. If we want to take a nap, we don't need to sleep inside. We can comfortably lie down on these mattresses and look at, for example, the water hole and antelope around it. In the evening, when it gets pleasantly cool, it's the best place to rest. Okay, enough of lounging around. In the evening, of course, this whole area is lit. There are lamps that look like oil ones. Fortunately, they aren't due to fire safety. They are electric, made to look old. Let's go back inside. These windows fully open so we can create a large open space here, if it's really warm. Do you know why it's called a giraffe house? Well, here we have a giraffe. Such houses like this we have a few. There's also oryx, springbok, etc. Really cool. Now we move to the part where we take care of hygiene. We've got a water basin with hot water, of course. Everything is clean, neat, better than in many European hotels. Two showers. One is located inside. Everything is made in stone. A large shower to be used freely. Here, a very important thing, a toilet, but we won't show you the details. And another very cool thing, an external shower. It's one of the best things we've got here. If the afternoon is very hot, this water cools really well. Of course, there's also hot water, so you can take a hot shower on a cold evening. Fantastic. It's covered to keep you private and discreet. I've got a few more things inside to show you. Coming to Namibia for such a long time, we wonder about the laundry. We get covered in dust every day. It turns out that there's no problem with that. A t-shirt from a morning hunt gets dirty, so what do I do? I throw it into a special bin. Forget about it. And on the next day, my t-shirt, clean, ironed and beautifully folded, waits for the owner. Therefore, on such a trip, you don't have to take a lot of underwear, t-shirts and socks. Everything is washed daily here. Anyway, check the shelves, elegantly arranged. Surely it's not my job. It's really nice, but Blaza Farm manager will tell you best about the place and Namibia.
Well, look, I mean, Namibia as a country is a beautiful country. There's a lot to see, a lot to do. We also do add-on tours, so the guys come and hunt here. We then, and it's normally myself, take them around Namibia to different parts, whether it's to the coast, we can do shark fishing, go up to Itasha to look at the animals, down to the Nama Desert to Sosa's Flay. Uh, we do other tours as well, wherever people haven't been, when they come back, there's always somewhere new to see. We have a great variety, very big variety, from the small little Stenbok and the Duk Duk, Daka. We have the Impala, Red Hartebeest, Waterbuck, Kudu. We have the Zebra, we've got the Giraffe, um, so we've got the whole variety of game that uh, one can hunt. We've got the cats, we do have leopard and cheetah which we'd need to get permits for and um, brown hyena, all those sort of animals which when pre-booked we can get the correct permits for. And with the GNU we have both black and the blue GNU. We do have a few rhino so that's always interesting to see but generally for hunting the giraffe would be the biggest animal, can get up to one and a half tons so it's quite exciting to, to see and get up close to them. We will bring in some new genes in the form of, of bulls every now and then if we need to and this is all part of our management plan. A lot of animals are here in the beginning. In Namibia there's a lot of animals like the oryx, red hartebeest, the kudu, um, elant that is naturally occurring in these areas so we didn't have to bring in um, a lot of animals. Some species we wanted to increase the numbers at the beginning but they're now breeding on their own after six years of careful management um, and we don't bring in animals now. We have um, got a sable breeding program um, so we do uh, try and look after animals for, for the future, for the future for people, for our business future. Um, it's very important to have sustainable hunting, it's very important to to, to have the bush um, in perfect condition for the animals, for them to have enough food, for them for proper breeding. Um, we do some bush clearing where we take out invasive um, trees and invasive bush that take over the grass areas. And in this way, we get a lot more grass, um, a lot more feed for the animals. Uh, we have got areas as well of non-hunting so this actually gives the animals a bit of a rest area, so they cannot be hunted all the time. We're very strict with the um, professional hunters with regards to this so that the animals do have a chance. With our hunting we, we um, practice fair chase completely and, and uh, myself as hunting manager has to be very strict with this. Um, I think the hunters that come here appreciate that because they can see when we're in the vehicles we see a lot of game, as you've seen. Uh, but when we are hunting, it's a proper hunt. The animals are, are, are very cautious. Um, we definitely do not shoot near, for example, water holes. We don't shoot near the vehicles and we don't shoot near the non-shooting areas or hunting areas. This allows the animals to also be able to adapt, have rest areas. We have rest periods within the hunting season. We also block off a month where we do not hunt, that also has the animals a bit of relax and then of course out of season they are not hunted as well. Well Blauser Lodge we are definitely uh, one of the top um, luxury lodges, hunting lodges in Namibia. We've got a very very big area in which we can hunt, 24,000 hectares which not many other lodges can have that is, uh, it is game fenced. So we can control our numbers of game very, very well, which we do quite scientifically. We, um, every year we send a, a helicopter up in this air at the end of every season, and we count every single animal that we have on the farm. We then using scientific percentages that are brought in from uh, the Ministry of Environment, um, work out how many animals we can take off the following season and we stick very strictly to this so we can have the animals reproducing on their own and having good hunting and good trophies for years to come. All the trophies that we don't find acceptable are obviously taken off so that our trophies themselves will be very, very good. On the farm itself, we also do game drives. So if non-hunters come or families come with the hunter, when the hunter's out, there's other things for them to do, relax in the beautiful lodge, the swimming pools, there's a the big one in the lodge, each chalet has its own pool. We have massages, 
um, we can go for game walks. So there's a lot, there's a lot for people who are not hunting to do, relax, see our water hole have always got game. The lodge sits in the non-shooting hunting area. So the animals here are, are quite relaxed and it's, you see animals all the time. So for non-hunters, it's, it's a perfect lodge as well. We do a lot of work on the farm itself, like I said, with the deep bushing to create feed, um, taking out the, the, the bushes and plants we don't need, introducing the plants that will give them a lot of food, um, water holes, we're forever fixing water holes because there's always a maintenance and upgrade to make sure there's enough water. It's an ongoing process. I mean, just maintenance of roads, of fences, etc., takes a lot of work, a lot of time. So, you know, and, and that's time we spend. And all of this adds to the hunter's enjoyment, how everything works so well. So we already know what it looks like in Namibia. The hard work of many people and the rules assure there's so much wildlife here. Looking at the Blaza farm, we are full of admiration for the involvement of all the employees in caring for the environment and all the smallest details of our stay here. And it's just the beginning. We've got a visit to a hot spring. If someone's too cold at the temperature of over 30 degrees Celsius, there will be a chance to warm up a bit more. After several minutes of driving, we reach a place where, in the middle of the stony desert, in a beautiful scenery, our hosts have prepared another surprise for us. The last place we visit today with our camera, a hot spring. It will be a place where we'll have lunch. it can't be anything but perfect. When we got here, a scent of tasty lasagna was spreading around, teasing our senses. We all started eating this delicious dish, all in a very good mood. And the fact that we could relax before the evening hunt in such a beautiful place kept the smiles on our faces for long. After eating, you need to relax and maybe go for a swim. Andreas didn't wait long and soon found himself in a small pool with warm water. Karol must have been a bit jealous of him because after a while he quickly joined in. Tremek was discouraged from swimming by a few baboon droppings floating in the water. But nobody tells you to dive right away. The lunchtime has passed very nicely and very quickly. We had to go back to prepare for another exciting hunt, this time with our friend Tom. During a head of oryx chase we'll meet on our way other wonderful African animals. And once again we will witness the magnitude of the disaster which due to drought affected entire Namibia. But that's all waiting for us tomorrow. Today we have to say goodbye and invite you next week to another episode of Eurohunters program. <laughs>